assume everybody can tell me why I have that bottle there. It's a bottle of syrup. Very good. 1883 is the MQTT standard TCP port number. Um, so all, all your things speak MQTT. Um, well, at least I hope all your things speak MQTT. And by that, I mean all your things. Um, this is a picture of an internet of toilets. Uh, Boris was just telling me about a country in Japan, uh, uh, about Japan with the toilets that uh, uh, report uh, what uh, individual producers have produced. Um, and um, we noticed when we started with MQTT, we noticed that we were writing N publish, uh, uh, republishers. So we had MQTT to Twitter, and somebody wanted MQTT to push over service, and MQTT to Prowl, and MQTT to uh, uh, notify my Android, and all sorts of notification services. Basically, uh, they're all the same. You, you have a little program which subscribes to an MQTT topic branch or a couple of uh, topic branches, extracts some data, and publishes this to a uh, service. And we then thought, well, why don't we try and do this properly? And that's what, well, we hope anyway, MQTT WARN has become. Um, MQTT WARN is a small, relatively small Python program. And this Python program uh, comes with a, a bunch of plugins. I think at the moment there are about 28 or almost 30 plugins, um, which you can enable and disable on demand. So we have on the left there, you have your MQTT broker. We have MQTT WARN, which is configured with a relatively simple configuration file, although it can, can get more complex. And depending on particular topics, these topics, uh, respectively the payload that comes in on those topics, is published to what we call services. And there, these services are, um, are made with relatively simple plugins also made in Python. And as I say, we have plugins for pushover, we have plugins for XBMC, for Twitter, for sending email over SMTP, NNTP, Prowl, OSX, uh, OS X, OS X, say, et cetera, et cetera. I'll show you a list in a second. Um, now, this morning, uh, who, who was uh, here during the OpenHab uh, talk this morning of Thomas? OK. Uh, OpenHab, for example, as one uh, method of home automation, um, or smart home uh, uh, implementation also has the possibility has bindings which implement uh, send mail and twitter and, and individual other uh, bindings and and we have uh, seen we have we we very strongly well i very strongly believe that things like notification should be centralized so for example what i do and what i recommend and i know several people who do that is you have open hub which publishes a notification if it needs to notify something. For example, doorbell is ringing, publishes to an MQTT broker, which is sitting with a small piece of software sitting on the same machine. And MQTT WARN would pick that up and then publish it to whatever service or group of services you want. So for example, you have uh, decided that um, it's time to watch a movie and you have uh, launched XBMC as your movie player in your bedroom or whatever. and Somebody rings the doorbell, and OpenHab uh, has, or your smart home, or your thing, has disabled the doorbell because the baby is sleeping. It has disabled the doorbell, but you still want an optical alert of that. And somebody presses the doorbell, and MQTT could uh, warn, could then take that notification and, for example, publish it on um, in XPMC. So you're sitting in your living room or in the basement or whatever, and you see at the bottom, ding dong, the door is bell, uh, the doorbell is ringing. Um, I mentioned that there are a large amount of plugins. Here's a list um, which I, I got a, a, a pull request for Insta Push yesterday or the day before, I think. So this is this is the list of plugins that we currently support. I'll show you some of these or examples of some of these. So file, for example, will store in a file or a free switch will talk to the VoIP gateway. Um, HTTP, of course, as a generic HTTP post um, uh, service. Uh, IRC cat, which uh, can publish to an IRC, or what do we have? Uh, XMPP, which will publish via Jabber to uh, X, uh, XMPP. Twitter, obviously, Zabbix, and as a monitoring system, or um, what's it called? 
it's in there somewhere, an RPE for Nagios or for Isinga. It's a whole, whole number of things. Uh, OS 10 notify will bring up a notification on the OS 10 notification bar, Prowl similarly, although there's also apps for that. OS 10 say will get your speaker to say something. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of uh, of possibilities, pipe, for example, will pipe, will pipe that notification, any uh, format you desire, to a shell script or a program that you uh, that you create. So the configuration of MQTT Warn is relatively simple, although it can be, uh, get a little bit complex. We have an initialization file, which is a any type file. At the top, we have defaults, whole bunch of defaults. You can set, configure TLS, you can configure client ID, you can configure MQTT last will and testament, things like that. There are relatively same defaults. I've just added these here as to, to demonstrate. Then we have launch. Launch specifies the, um, the plugins that you want to use. In this case, we'll start very, uh, off very easily. In this case, we're going to use the file plugin. And each plugin or each service has a configuration section, which starts with config, colon, and then name of the service. And in this section, this is now then plugin specific, you configure uh, individual targets to this service. In this particular case, I'm only interested in writing data to one file. I'm going to call that service, that target, I'm call it, going to call it record, and um, I specify the name of the file. And here's an option, append new line. So we will have a file, uh, sorry, a service which is called, or a target which is called file colon record. And we could also have additional targets for additional files. And then we have, um, here at the bottom, we configure one topic branch, hello slash plus, plus is a single level MQTT topic specifier, and we specify the targets to which these, this the payload should be written. So, that's it. Let's look at an example. We publish to the topic hello slash A, with, um, a JSON payload, for example, and if we look at that file, we get exactly that payload in there. Nothing particularly special. Let's do one slight modification, and this is the, excuse me, that's what we had before, targets equals, equals target name, and now we add format equals welcome, comma, dear name. MQTT warn will attempt to decode JSON automatically from um, incoming payloads. If it is not JSON, nothing happens. If it is JSON, it's decoded, and the resulting elements in that JSON can be used to create output. That's the format statement. If we now republish the same thing, and I look at the last line in the file, it says, welcome, comma, dear Jane. The name element out of this JSON has been inserted at that point. Okay. Let's look at our doorbell to TV thing um, that we were looking at before. We have um, a new stanza, config XBMC. Don't forget launch XBMC also. We can add as many, you can add as many targets as you want, as many services as you want. And the XBMC target or the XBMC service type is a little bit more, more complex. We again have a target called bedroom. We might have others, other TVs, yeah, other televisions. Um, and it has host and port number for XBMC. That's an XBMC plugin that allows notifications and optional user and password. And here we have, again, our um, MQTT topic branch. For example, doorbell slash plus targets is XBMC bedroom. Title is doorbell and an image. This title will become the title of the XBMC notification, and the image will be loaded by the XBMC plugin and displayed in there. The name of the image is also dynamic. You can extract that directly out of the, um, uh, you can use one of the JSON elements from them for that. Any questions so far? In this particular, 
Yeah, good catch. In this particular case, yes, because I'm using localhost there, and XPMC, maybe somebody noticed at the beginning, was the, the local XPMC player on the Mac. But this would, of course, normally be remote. Yeah, you probably have XPM, uh, sorry, MQTT Warn running on your little home automation, Raspi, BeagleBone, whatever, uh, Linux server in the basement or your NAS or etc. And you would target then the XPMC addresses of your players. Yeah? Okay, now in addition, that was the doorbell, excuse me. Uh, remember the payload was ding. In addition, we would like, um, in case we're not at home, or XBMC is not running, we want to add an SMTP alert. Nothing easier than that. We load the service, SMTP, specify server, username, password, site, TLS, etc. Here again, we have a target, which could specify, which specifies one or more email addresses. We can have several targets. And then in our XPMC example, we, add, we simply add as target, comma, SM, SMTP target name. So somebody presses the doorbell, in this case, OpenHab, pick up, picks up that signal, publishes an, uh, a single MQTT message, and that message would then appear on my TV and via SMTP. And this is here on the right, just the message, the raw message, uh, just to show you what it, what it turns into. So you can filter via Xmailer, the subject is the title that was here, and the payload is in the body of the message. Um, supposing you are interested in Things like uh, statistics, uh, electricity statistics, any any um, data kind of thing. Uh, I have a little device uh, which is made by a Dutch company. It's called ULES. Um, it's an electricity meter which I attach to the to the to the meter, and it, it counts the impulses, so the, the the blinking LED impulses of the electricity meter, and it publishes. Unfortunately, not via MQTT, but it publishes this information uh, can be obtained uh, via REST. And I obtain this information and publish it onto my MQTT broker at home. And the Carbon plugin to MQTT Warn supports the Carbon protocol. Anybody know the Carbon protocol? If you know Graphite, the Python Graphite utilities, they use Carbon. And um, in this particular case, I use Carbon to talk to InfluxDB. InfluxDB is a time series uh, database system written in Go, very, uh, very performant, very nice. And um, so it's a simple matter of defining that, specifying uh, the, the appropriate target, and after a few hours, you start getting graphs like this. Okay, so Carbon is one more plugin that we have in um, MQTT Warn. If you have more complex data, um, we can specify functions in MQTT Warn on a per topic basis. Suppose we are getting this JSON, and this, by the way, comes from the pedometer which we have in our own tracks app on an iPhone 5S. Um, it's a JSON with type steps, it has a timestamp from, etc., and how many steps I walked. I'm very lazy, as you can see. Um, now, I would like to record how many steps I took on what date. So the output should be something like this, 1,937 dates on that date, et cetera, that on the next day, that on the next day. So what I actually want is I could, I could just take the steps and the timestamp, but I would like that timestamp as an ISO date uh, timestamp. So we can create a function to do this, and this function here again, we have own tracks. Uh, that's the topic to which the phone will pub uh, the own tracks app will publish. In my particular case, we have a target specified log as an info and file uh, the steps uh, file, which is recorded in a file. Here we have format steps and timestamp. Now this timestamp, let me just go back for a second, is not in this JSON. Okay, here we have a TST and. What is actually going to happen is MQTT Warn takes the payload and runs it through this function that we specify and this function that we write. And this all data function gets the topic, the MQTT topic, and the data can then 
extract data, convert data, etc., and returns a dict with new values. Here in this particular case, timestamp and steps. I won't go into this. It's just extracting the individual elements out of the payload. And this dict, this dictionary, is then returned to MQTT WARN, and we can use it in the format. In many cases, writing such functions will not be necessary, but at least it is possible. Um, MQTT WARN is good for notification. We have a whole bunch of notification plugins for Pushover, for example, or Prowl, Notify My Android. There's a whole, whole list of, of, uh, of different apps. There's one for Windows, uh, uh, phones, etc. People who use these uh, give us the plugins. And um, here we have uh, the possibility, just a small example of something that can be done also with the OwnTracks app. We have, um, I have a target configured to go to push over, to the push over service. This is the configuration of the push over service. You have an API key and an application key, which you have to register for. And here again, we have a format, username, in parentheses, device, there's an event, a description, at, and we have a number of, a bunch of built-in um, elements that we can use. And that turns into this, I hope you can see it at the bottom. Username, in parentheses, device. Event is enter, description, at Central European time, or local time. And the filter function, which I won't show you here, the filter function is also given the topic and the payload, and the filter function can return true or false to say, okay, please republish this, please alert, dear MQTT warn, please pass this on to the tar target, or forget about it. One thing that somebody wanted is we've added periodic tasks, and uh, periodic tasks are also configured within the configuration file in the cron section. You can have individual function names, and you specify a number of seconds. And then this Python function, which you uh, write yourself, will be invoked every so many seconds. In this particular case, we're using the built-in service uh, object to publish a particular Ping on a specific topic every 10 seconds. So MQTT WARN is a rather nice utility. It's been used by a lot of people. It's uh, quite stable. Um, there's one thing coming uh, actually tonight. Um, it's uh, just been pushed, but uh, we haven't tested it yet. And that is what happens if MQTT WARN for any reason dies, yeah? if it crashes. What do we do then? And um, Ben Jones has just pushed uh, um, a commit, uh, which will allow us to warn sort of one final uh, death service that MQTT warn has just died. Uh, but that could also be done, for example, with any monitoring solution. So my recommendation is relatively easy to get started. Um, have a look at it, particularly if you're doing things like integrating with OpenHab or with any other um, thing uh, which publishes uh, information. You can convert that and republish to Twitter, to mail, to any notification service, almost any notification service. And um, yeah, it's quite good fun. Any questions? There are a couple of Python-based microcontrollers. Have you tried to run MQTT1 on any of those platforms? No, not yet, because I don't have one. But do try, if you have some, do try and tell me. Or send me a microcontroller and then I'll try it. And no, I have no experience with, uh, I have very little experience with microcontroller, a bit of Arduino, and et cetera. Uh, but I've never, I know they exist, but I've never seen, I've never sort of had or smelt a, a one with Python on board. Would be nice. Any other questions? Okay, then off you go for coffee. Thank you for your attention.